Hi everyone, this is lesson number five on probability from Actuarial Path. In this lesson, we will study conditional probability. Suppose we have two events, let's say A and B, event A, event B, which are subsets of the sample space S. The intersection between A and B which I am shading in black here, explains the relationship between the events A and B, and that is A intersection B. Conditional probability quantifies the probability of one event occurring given the other one has already occurred. Suppose now that A has already occurred. Given that A has already occurred, what is the probability that event B will also occur? And that's the notation we use for conditional probability. This denotes the probability of B occurring given that A has occurred. Since A has occurred, let me shade the region covered by A by a blue color. Given A has already occurred, B can only occur in the part that is inside A. And the part of B that is inside A is this part which is the intersection. P of B given A, probability of B given A, is the size of the intersection, which is A intersection B, divided by the size of event A. If I divide the numerator and the denominator by the size of the sample space, the size of the sample space, the size of the sample space, the numerator here gives me a value which is the probability of A intersection B. And the denominator is equal to the probability of a. Therefore, I have my conditional probability formula, which says P of B given A is equal to P of A intersection B divided by P of A. Also, the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of the intersection, A intersection B, divided by the probability of B. Note here that the probability of the given event, in this case which is B, goes as the denominator. The probability of the given event, A here, goes in the denominator. And those are your conditional probability formulas. Let's do an example. Suppose we do an experiment of rolling two dice, one from our left hand and one from our right hand. So you, let's say you roll a die, a six-sided die, from your right hand and another one from your left hand. Define the following events. Event A, let's say, is the event of rolling a higher value on your left hand than the value on your right hand. Left hand die greater than right hand die. Suppose event B as the event of rolling a number 4 on the left hand. The goal is to find the probability of A given B and the probability of B given A. We could also find the probabilities of A and P of B. In fact, let's start with these two and then we find the conditional probabilities. To find those probabilities, I'm going to start listing the elements in the sample space. The right hand die could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Also, the left hand die could take values of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Bear with me when I draw this table. 
I'll try to be quick. So the element 1, 1 is rolling a number 1 on the left and a number 1 on the right. 1, 2, 1 on the left, 2 on the right. 1 on the left, 3 on the right. 1 on the left, 4 on the right. 1 on the left, 5. 1, 6. I'm going to use a blue color when my event falls in event A. For instance, rolling a 2 on the left and 1 on the right falls in the event A because the left hand 2 is greater than the right hand 1. So is 3, 1. 4, 1 is also an A. 5, 1 is an A. 6, 1 is also an A. 6, 2 is an A. 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 5, 4, 5, 3, 5, 2, 4, 2, 4, 3, 3, 2 are all in A. 2, 2 is not an A. 3, 3 is not. 4, 4 is not an A. 5, 5 is not an A. 6, 6 is not an A. So I can actually count the number of elements in A. Therefore, the probability of A is equal to the number of elements in A divided by the number of elements in the sample space. The number of elements in A is 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The off-diagonal elements in the lower left corner. 15 divided by 36. And that is 5 divided by 12. The probability of B is the number of elements in B divided by the number of elements in the sample space. I know I have 36 elements in the sample space. How many elements do I have in B? B is the event that you roll A number 4 on the right, I'm sorry, on the left hand. Number 4 on the left hand. That is looking at the elements in row number 4. 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, and 4, 6. Those are in B. So I have 6 elements in event B. I have 1 over 6 as a probability of B. Let's find the probability of A given B. Let's use the conditional probability formula. That is P of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. We already know the probability of B. And that is 1 over 6 or 6 over 36. What is the probability of A intersection B? The event A intersection B includes only the elements 4, 1, 4, 2, and 4, 3. You are restricted to this row. And also, looking at that row, count the number of elements of your sample space, which satisfy the condition that left hand is greater than right hand. Those are only 3. So that is 3 out of 36, the probability of A intersection B. Therefore, this is equal to 3 out of 6. Without even using the formula, if you are given B, that given you have rolled a 4 on, on the left hand. You are restricting yourself to the entries in row number 4. And just looking at the entries in row number 4, which ones satisfy the event A? Those are 4, 1, 4, 2, and 4, 3. That is 3 out of the 6 in this row. What is the probability of B given A? B given A is the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of A. The probability of A intersection B is 3 out of 36. And the probability of A is 5 out of, 5 out of 12 or 15 out of 36. Therefore you have 3 out of 15. Even without using the formula, you could see you have 15 elements in event A. Okay, so given A, given A has occurred, given that your event should be one of the 15 in blue, which of those 15 in blue satisfy 
the condition that a number 4 is rolled on the left hand the condition that b is also satisfied so of the 15 b is satisfied in those three again that is 3 out of 15 which is again one fifth a direct extension of conditional probability is what we call the multiplication law of probability multiplication Let's take one of the formulas that we had for conditional probability. The probability of A given B is the probability of A intersection B divided by P of B. I can write the probability of A intersection B to be the product of the probability of B and the conditional probability of A given B. Okay? And also, if I take the conditional probability formula, B given A has a probability equal to the intersection, P of A intersection B divided by P of A, which implies, again, the intersection of A and B has a probability equal to P of A times P of B given A. And this is simply what we call the multiplication law of probability. Example, let's say we have an urn which contains six red marbles and four black marbles. So I have ten combined. Let's draw two marbles without replacement, one after the other. Define the event A1 to be the event that the first marble drawn is black. Define the event A2 to be the second marble is also black. It's black. Now this is done without replacement. What is the probability of drawing a black in the first draw and a black in the second draw. And I can write this probability as the probability of A1 multiplied by the probability of A2 given A1. This is directly the multiplication law of probability. Now, what is P of A1? The probability of drawing a black in the first trial is 4 out of 10 because I have 10 marbles, 4 of which are black. And I'm doing this without replacement. So in the second round, I have 9 marbles left. Given the first one was black, then out of the 9, only 3 are black. You can simplify this to get 2 over 15. Another way you could do this is in the following way you're sampling sequentially. So the first draw could be a black or it could be a red marble. It's a black marble with 4 out of 10 probability. It's a red marble with 6 out of 10 probability. That's your first draw. Given that you had a black on your next draw, you could have a black again, or you could have a red. So given your first one is black, now you have nine marbles left in the urn. Out of the nine, only three black marbles. Three out of nine. Or you would have six red marbles left. Given your first one is red, your next draw could be black or red. Given the first one is red, then your next urn has nine 
marbles, and of those nine, four of them are blacks. Again, of the nine, if the first one was red, you have five red left. For example, you can find the property of a black on the first, and a black on the, on the second is four tenth multiplied by three ninth. path to your desired events. For example, you, are, you maybe you are interested in finding the probability of drawing a black on the first one and maybe a red on the second one, a two complement. And that would be four tenth times six out of nine. 